Hi, I'm Ben Beal, an agriculture educator with the University of Maryland Extension. In this video, I will describe the various components of a plasticulture system and demonstrate plasticulture equipment. Plasticulture is the use of plastic mulch and drip irrigation in the production of an agricultural crop. Plasticulture gained popularity in the 1980s with advances in mulch and drip irrigation technology. Today, the use of plastic mulch, drip irrigation, and raised beds is widespread and a standard practice on most vegetable operations. The increase in plasticulture use is due to its ability to increase yields, increase fruit quality, and allow for earlier or extended harvest times. Crops commonly grown using plasticulture include muskmelon, tomatoes, green peppers, cucumbers, squash, eggplant, watermelon, okra, and a wide variety of others. The first component of a plasticulture system is plastic mulch, often used in conjunction with a raised bed. Plastic mulch and raised beds work together to provide an ideal environment for vegetable growth. The plastic warms the soil, prevents weed growth, and controls moisture while the raised bed provides for a deeper soil profile and better drainage around the root system. The first decision is what type of plastic should be used. Growers may use either embossed plastic or smooth plastic film. Embossed plastic will stretch tightly over raised beds, resist tearing and wind damage, and is superior grade to slick or smooth grade. Raised beds are normally covered with the embossed plastic. Smooth plastic is less expensive and works well for flat beds. However, it will expand in the summer heat and tends to tear easily on a raised bed system. One advantage of the embossed plastic is its ability to stretch tightly over the soil profile. This leads to better heat transfer from the plastic to the soil and a more quickly warms the soil in the spring. Mulch thickness varies depending upon brand and manufacturer, but the standard is 1 to 1.25 mil for one season durability. There are also several mulch colors available. Black plastic is the most common as it does the best job of preventing weed growth. Black will cause the soil to warm quickly in the spring and may be a problem for heat sensitive crops in the summer. Black plastic can be used on crops such as musk melon, tomato, peppers, cucumber, squash, eggplant, watermelon, and okra. White on black plastic uses a reflective white layer on top of a standard black layer. The advantage of this design is reduced heat on sensitive crops such as cut flowers or crops grown in hotter climates in the summer. The black underlayment serves to restrict weed growth more effectively than just white alone. Clear plastic is yet another option. Clear plastic will warm the soil the quickest of any mulch. It is most commonly used for sweet corn to promote quick germination and spring growth. After the corn emerges, holes must be punched and later the plastic split to prevent the temperature from injuring plants. The plastic can be purchased pre-cut. Clear plastic will not impede weed growth. Green plastic is a compromise between black and clear. You will obtain better weed control than clear and also obtain quicker warming than black. Be cautious if using this on anything other than sweet corn as weed control is not satisfactory for season long use. Finally, there is also red plastic. Certain red plastic has been shown in some research trials to show a slight increase in yield in tomato crops. This is due to the reflection of the light spectrum most favorable to growth back into the foliage canopy. I advise growers to experiment with red plastic on a small scale to see if it is suitable for their operation. Typically, red plastic is more expensive than black plastic. The next component of a plastic culture system is drip irrigation. If using plastic mulch, you will also need to use drip irrigation under the mulch to provide water. Drip irrigation can be used without the mulch as well. The advantages of drip irrigation are numerous, but the key advantage is being able to apply water and fertilizer in a controlled manner directly to the plant root zone. This enables the farmer to reduce water use by up to 50%, reduce foliar diseases, precisely tear the nutrient applications, reduce labor needs, and irrigate from smaller water sources under lower pressures. The drip irrigation system has many components, however the system is fairly simple to set up for small operations. Components include the water source, pump, filtering systems, fertilizer injector, 
distribution or header lines, fittings and couplings, and finally the drip taping or tubing. The drip line or tape contains emitters spaced at intervals from 4 to 24 inches. Most vegetable crops require the 8 to 12 inch spacing. On very sandy ground or on crops requiring high water use, you may use the tape with shorter emitter spacing. The tape is also available in different water flow rates, measured in gallons per minute per 100 feet of tape. Standard flow rates range from 0.4 to 0.5 gallons per minute per 100 feet. A general rule of thumb for the Mid-Atlantic area for maturing vegetables in the summer is a 0.5 gallon per minute per 100 feet of drip line to run two to three hours to supply adequate water. The drip line is installed with the plastic layer or it can be pulled by hand on crops without mulch. Next, let's take a quick look at how plastic mulch and drip tape is installed. Laying plastic mulch correctly takes time and proper equipment adjustment. You should plan on practicing to get things right. In this example, we are using a 6 to 8 inch raised bed system. It takes a tractor with significant horsepower to create a raised bed and carry the heavy machine. Typically a 50 to 60 horsepower machine is the minimum. The first component of a mulched bed layer is the metal shoes which pull soil from outside of the row into the bed former. The bed former shapes the soil into a firm bed, preferably with a slight crown in the middle. The polyethylene plastic comes in rolls and is placed on rolling carriers. The plastic is fed down to the bed former and under a roller. Next, tensioning wheels hold the plastic as it conforms to the shape of the bed. Cover discs throw soil over the edge of the plastic to hold it in place. The dirt shields control the amount of soil left on the edge of the bed. Adjustments of the cover disc and tensioning wheel is critical for proper operation. Drip tape is held on a roller and is fed under the plastic mulch. Most companies recommend bearing the tape 2 to 3 inches for added protection. When starting the row, it is very helpful to have a, another person who can make sure that the drip tape is secured and to hold the plastic mulch. When laying the mulch, make sure the mulch fits tightly over the bed and does not rip or tear at the shoulders. At least 5 inches of the edge of the plastic should be covered. Also note that the soil must be properly tilled and free of residue to flow freely through the machine. Once the mulch is laid, you are ready for planting. It is typically a good idea to wait 7 to 10 days for the soil to warm and for the soil to settle before planting. For more information on planting in plastic mulch, see the beginning farmer video on the water wheel transplanter.